Welcome. Drifting an electric Porsche estate on gravel? <laughs> yeah, who would have thought I would ever do this 10 years ago? Welcome. Welcome to our full driving review of the Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo, a car that maybe can do everything. Sports car, off-road vehicle, estate, family car. We will find out and I mean, look at that here right now. No one with sane mind would ever do this to a 200,000 euros or dollars car. So that's why we do it for you here today. Porsche spared some of the vehicles for the off-roading part. They will be ruined anyway, but I mean, if they ask me, would I take one after it's finished with the off-road part? I would take it to the car wash and take it anyway. Well, I think for our exterior interior part, let's clean it up. And here we go. We cleaned the car and we switched the color to Dolomite Silver. Yeah, or did we? <laughs> here the Turbo S as the Cross Turismo, the most powerful version. Around three seconds is the acceleration figure. Then you go with around four seconds for the 4S and around five seconds acceleration figure with the Taycan 4. Cross Turismo. It will always have all-way drive because it has this crossover off-road character and you can see visually directly the crossover wheel arches. The Turbo S has them painted. The other ones have them in this typical normal matte plastic style. Turbo S of course also then with the carbon ceramic brakes. 21 inch wheels in this case. Yeah not so off-roadish but you know it's a little bit about the show as well. And of course, once again, in the rear, the crossover wheel arches and the roof line that is continued right there. This also makes this unique look and also makes it more practical. Soon more deals about that because here, the rear hatch, this will be crucial. So much more practicability with this version. With 4 meters 96 or 195 inches, the length is the same here with the Estate and with the sedan. Yeah, Porsche doesn't want me to call it estate, but estate, 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 estate. <laughs> yeah. Then you can see here, once again, the side profile, really such a unique styling here. Also the crossover carbon fiber use in the lower area. This is really special in here, once again, for the Turbo S. Chassis-wise and suspension-wise, this is really interesting because the Cross Turismo starts 20 millimeters higher then there's an optional design package, off-road design package, that puts it 10 millimeters even higher, soon showing you that. And then you can use the off-road lift function, which is putting it 20 millimeters higher once more. And then overall, we can go 50 millimeters higher. However, the normal Taycan also has the lift function for the basement garage or so. Always starts with all-wheel drive, told you, one electric motor in the front, one in the rear, and in the rear also has a two-speed transmission then for higher efficiency and better performance at higher speeds. And also rear axle steering, once again standard for the Turbo S, one of the very cool features with this vehicle. So no low base version, as we know from the sedan now, the sedan also features the rear wheel drive version now. We also have a review of that. Here they wanted the Cross Turismo to start a little bit higher, but in comparison to, you know, a you know, really comparable normal sedan, this uh, just around 1,500 euros or dollars more and that impressive rear. And I think they managed it very well that you have more versatility in the rear, but still the rear end is not ruined design-wise, you know? It still looks very sleek and sporty. And then again, the crossover character here in the lower part, the Turbo S, I mean, how can I, how can I say? <laughs> you have the crossover car on the one hand and the Turbo S makes it sportier again. So the Turbo S is kind of, you know, going in the opposite direction where the cross tourism is going. But maybe that's exactly what you find even more interesting. But let's also take a look at the other versions very soon. Range-wise, we have tested so many Tarkan versions. Winter times, or when you hit the throttle, around 300 kilometers or 190 miles with a bigger battery. And in summertime, you know, better temperatures and when you keep it a little bit steady, 400 kilometers or 250 miles. Once again, always with the bigger battery, the smaller one will perform less good. Charging flap with sliding or tapping here, and then it opens. And 11 kilowatt AC standard, optional 22 kilowatt, come on, please make it included. And then the DC charging, for example, at ING fast chargers in Europe or Electrify America in the US. Soon also available with plug and charge if the charging station supports that up to 270 kilowatt DC then. If you want to charge even more, well, use the brakes because then the Turbo S can
can recuperate 290 kilowatt by breaking the other versions, the base versions, 265 kilowatt. And now more colors and design details. This is here also a Turbo S in Mamba Green. You can see here, once again, the painted wheel arches. This is exclusive to the Turbo S. Usually these crossover wheel arches come then in the classic styling. So in this matte finish, see it right here. This is a car in ice gray. It's a really cool, literally cool color. And another special thing is this one here, it's a 4S by the way, has the off-road design package and there you can see we have additional flaps right here in the front then another one here at the side right there making it even more off-roadish and another one here at the rear and the fourth one right there and overall definitely if you compare the design appearance the question is more crossover elegant sportiness or more off-road-ish. Yeah, I don't know. What about you? Which one would you go for? And another interesting color, Neptune Blue. The car, not me. And a little bit more eccentric, we have these frozen colors. Frozen Berry is this one. Let's take it that way. It's really unique. Oh, and here with the dashboard, you can see that? With a fitting colored dashboard right there. <laughs> yeah, that's something. And we also have frozen blue, this lighter blue color. This is also really cool. I had a similar one with the sedan, you know, in the earlier stage. And this one does attract a lot of attention. However, I find the Miami blue by Porsche a little bit cooler. This is a little bit more striking. We know it for the Macan and the 911 and the 718 and so on. But this one, why not? And once again, with the crossover wheel arches, such a unique look. And this is the famous roof box, additional equipment here possible with the Taycan Cross Turismo. You can actually officially drive 200 kilometers an hour or 125 miles an hour with that one. Not sure if I would really do that, but theoretically it's possible. And this is secondary equipment, very interesting. Own Porsche bikes. They are built by Rotwild in the Porsche design. One more mountain bike style, one more street urban style. And then there's this bike carrier and you can also fold it away and then you can also open the rear hatch. So this is a very practical solution. And opening the hatch will be possible also electrically here with the button, not with the key, not from the inside for safety reasons. And when they have updated the software, then you will press this key here with this prototype vehicle. At the moment, we have to do it manually, but you see it works and closing will also be available electrically like this. So pretty cool solution. And I mean, I would like to know from you guys here, this um, arrangement with the roof box and the bikes, would that be your dream Porsche solution with the Taycan Cross Turismo? Definitely very interesting and so unusual to see. I mean, when like a couple of years ago, you would have thought an electric Porsche, an estate with a roof box and also with a bike carrier, everyone would have gone crazy maybe. And maybe it's the time now. So how is the interior of the Cross Turismo different? Door handles fold out like this. Oh, by the way, Nice door closing sound, although it's frameless doors. Inside, nothing really changed. And the basic interior is also quite the same, but differences to come very soon. The Taycan Turbo S always comes with the animal free race tech seats. They are also recommended. This here is the animal skin package. However, the race tech's done better in seating comfort, climate comfort, and also in raciness. Then let's get inside here. The Cross Turismo here in the front. Has a lot of headroom in general with the Taycan, one with A6 or 6 with one. The difference here, cross turismo to the normal one, is just like 10 millimeters, so just barely. Um, so in the front, it's not too big of a difference. However, in the rear, we will gain something because the roof goes a little bit further right here. This is the main difference. So the front part of the vehicle is identical chassis-wise. And then the roof is just continued and that will bring us around five centimeters or two inches more headroom. Let's experience that. Getting inside and yeah, definitely feel that. So I still have some space over my head, whereas with a normal Taycan, when I lean back, it gets really close or you know, hit my head a little bit with the ceiling here. 
to go like this. So this is more relaxing and definitely for tall adults in the rear. And you somehow feel this, you know, more air, a little bit more room also changes acoustically a little bit. Let's see how that affects the driving later on. The biggest advantage of the Taycan Cross Turismo is this hatch. It opens really wide, not like in the sedan. This is the best thing to get things in and out easily. And here, you can see here the backpack can stand as it is here right now. With a normal Taycan sedan, most often, you know, we have situations like these or these and you close the hatch and then beep, 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 and it won't work. Here it does because you have a little bit more height here. In liters, just about 40 liters more. That's not too much because the liter figures are measured below the cover here. But still more versatile. And here the width is a little bit more than 80 centimeters or more than 32 inches. And the length right here is the same though. A little bit more than 40 inches or a little bit more than the meter. The Turbo S, by the way, has a little bit less of liter capacity because of the subwoofer. Then the charging cable here underneath, like this. And of course, the height under the cover right here. So this is about 17 inches or 40, 40 centimeters. And the overall height right here, you know, yeah, so like this, about 27 inches or 68 centimeters. Two more things following the seats. One third, two thirds split, here we go. And one meter is 90 or 75 inches is then the total length and the famous autocrew child safety test or the question, will it squish? Let's go. Hmm, nice. A frunk is nothing special for Porsche. That's why they also have it in their EVs. <laughs> here we go and yeah, resembles really one of a 911. The interior of the Taycan Cross Turismo, similar to the sedan version, 16.8 inch curved digital instruments, then the 10.9 inch screen right here, optional passenger screen next to it, and the lower screen additional, yeah, that's a screen overload definitely. Here this one then is 8.4 inch. The only cool thing is that you have this charging meter right here. So also when you're going fast charging, then you can see the stats here. That's the cool thing. Controlling the climate unit, however, is more complicated than here um, in this screen. And yeah, the infotainment system itself, sometimes you see here, it's not that fast. So it could be a little bit more responsive. That's the thing. Sometimes we also have experienced screen freeze, but the menu structure is actually quite good and clear to read. This is the Apple CarPlay integration like this. And the Bose sound system is also to my liking. Best greetings to my friend Alex Morph. Hmm. Yeah, nice. Very clear sound. And there we go. With the digital instruments, you can change all three different ones. GeForce Meter here, for example. Then in the middle part, you can also have the map like this, or you can also go, you know, do zoom settings and so on. Or you can also go with the full map. That is also a possible satellite map. Here we go. And extended map. That's the map all over the place. And on the right side, if you go back to the power meter setting, right side here for the trip meter, for example, or the drive modes, and they automatically appear when you switch the drive mode selector. Interesting today is also on the right side for ESC on and off, one pressing ESC Sport. Usually, you know, like this, an ESC Sport or PSM, they call it here, or hold it longer for deactivating it completely, but don't do this on public roads. Here for the suspension setting, this is then the lift function. So this gives you the highest boost. It's also available for the normal Taycan and good for basement, garage, and so on. And they also have this smart lift function. That's one of my favorite functions. Um, so when you activate it here, then in the infotainment system, asks you right here, smart lift, say lift, you can save the setting. And then always at this location here, geolocation, the car goes up. That could be your basement garage, for example, or there are some speed humps in your, um, you know, in your roundabouts and so on. And then the car is always going a little bit higher. Really nice setting. And the head-up display, a good option. And to me, in this latest version here, it seems clearer than before. So, good development. Hey, and we start off-road driving today because that way we can experience the technology. And usually there's instant talk from the throttle, really direct. But here in the gravel mode, which is available in the sport, in the 
cross turismo, not sport turismo here, we're not in the Panamera, Taycan cross turismo. Here in the gravel mode, there's more fine feeling in the throttle, so it comes later basically. And here we can also just, in this uphill section, we can just stand still, hitting the brakes. And now when I want to accelerate again, we have electric all-wheel drive, front motor and rear motor, and they're independent from each other, but they can communicate, but electronically. And then, really flawlessly here, very finely tuning the throttle and gently up the hill again. This is really cool. So sometimes off-road modes make the car a little bit more loose. Here in this case, the gravel mode just brings you more traction. So more fine tuning of the throttle and also more traction then. So in the sports mode, then you can let it loose all the way, but here just more traction. And in the gravel mode also, plus 10 millimeters higher. So usually here, the Cross Turismo is already 20 millimeters higher than the normal Taycan. And then additional 10 millimeters from the gravel mode. If you don't have the off-road design package, then you're already another 10 millimeters higher. Then the gravel mode doesn't change the niveau. And on top of the gravel mode, you can use the lift function, which is also available for a normal Taycan. And this brings in another 20 millimeters. So then from the base to this one here with all the stuff, 50 millimeters higher possibility then. Yeah, that's of course quite decent. Not for the hardest off-road trails in Moab, but at least for some soft off-roading. A little bit tired at the moment. Um, maybe I should go to the Sports Plus mode and wake me and wake everyone up. And follow that Panamera. And lead it. Let's go. <laughs> okay, I'm awake, I'm awake, I'm awake. <laughs> ah, the Turbo S here in the Taycan is just beyond anything. Um, yeah, maybe not. A, with a new Tesla Model S plat, yes, but everything else, super insane. I mean, we are at speed here, 120 kilometers an hour, like 70 miles an hour, and like. <laughs> and that's 200 kilometers an hour, 125 miles an hour. Of course, this thing goes even faster, but I watch the traffic a little bit and. Super stable here, also at higher speeds. It's like nothing for this vehicle. And such a great handling and control, super precise steering and... Um, uh, God damn it. Traffic announcement. I mean, they shall warn you, but at some point, I think, you know, to me, you know, they are always like scaring the hell out of me. So um, I'd rather leave them, leave them up, off. Yeah, <laughs> see, they really brought me out of, out of concept, so I should rather focus on... <sighs> wow, 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 wow. It's really insane, that acceleration, and I mean, 0 to 1 kilometers or 62 miles an hour, 0 to 60 miles an hour is less than 3 seconds, and the more impressive thing is, of course, when we are already here at speed, that we still always have that boost and that instant torque and lane change, by the way, even at higher speeds, I mean, the reactions here from the vehicle, so amazing. You could take it on the racetrack anytime, definitely. Difference here with the Cross Turismo version, when Jonas and I, we talked about this, and you do have a different feeling in this vehicle, indeed. It's not that it would be a different vehicle, but I'm not sure if it's just um, that you feel it's a little bit more air behind you, that the roof is a little bit higher, maybe it's acoustic or something, but you somehow have a different feeling than when being in a sedan. But steering-wise and chassis-wise, agility and acceleration, of course, no difference. Just a little bit of this, you know, you feel there's a little bit more room behind you. And that's not better or worse or something, it's just a little bit different. But that's about it. Everything else in driving is just like. And now to our conclusion for the day of a vehicle that is really so extra only one of the most special cars for this year, because as I said initially, electric vehicle, 
electric estate. Sports car, as the Turbo S, maybe even a supercar performance-wise. Family car, adventure car, soft off-road vehicle. I mean, hits are almost everything. The question is always when you combine so many features in one vehicle, can it do everything well? Well, maybe not everything, not for hard off-roading so, and so on, but definitely it's super sporty. The handling is once again amazing. No matter which version you go for, the Turbo S, of course, the supercar then of the lineup, yet again, ah, so expensive. So the <laughs> model range we like from 100 to 200,000 euros or dollars. That's, of course, really tough to swallow, especially because the range is not the highest. So. Um, like these mid-size EVs, Tesla Model 3, Polestar 2, Ioniq 5, Kia EV6 now, they are all better in range and way cheaper as for the pricing. Yeah, you can say they don't exactly compare, but if you look at the EV market as a whole. So the thing is, or my point is, at this price point, this vehicle here does not offer a decent range. Yeah, that's, I think, one of the main downsides. So downsides, so price is too high, and the range is not at the highest stake. So these two things being said, the handling is super amazing. I can just stress it once again. Technology-wise, also very interesting. So agile, especially with the rear axis steering. The Turbo S is a beast of the road, but even with a base tire, I'm gonna have a lot of fun. Here with the Cross Turismo, always with the all-wheel drive. So you have, you know, always this crossover characteristics. Soft off-roading was a lot of fun. Of course, I would not recommend to drift this car on gravel road because it will ruin the paint. As I said, Porsche had some vehicles for spare that, you know, all the journalists here can take them on the gravel road and, you know, in this quarry we are here today, really impressive scenery. I think no one else would ever do that and ruin the precious Porsche Taycan with it. But maybe, you know, this roof box option or also for the bike carrier, so you can do a lot with this vehicle. And to me, the most important thing is when you close that hatch, you can just put in higher things without a problem. You're just more versatile. So from practicability reasons, I would definitely go for this one. Styling wise, I also find the sedan very beautiful, but this one with the crossover wheel arches, adds this very special look. And I can predict, at least in Germany, more Taycan will be sold as Cross Turismo than the sedan. Not sure if it will be the same case in the US, I would like to know from you guys, which one would you go for? Here, the Cross Turismo, maybe with the Turbo S styling or with the real off-road styling with the off-road design package with the additional flaps, or would you rather stick with the sedan? Tell me in the comments and I hope you enjoyed our unique episode for today. Tune in next time.